After the long winter and spring break, I'm back on the road. Over the last few months, I've been to 12 wine regions spread out through six countries, all expenses paid. Sounds too good to be true? Well... The secret is, I'm Matthew Horky. For the last seven years, I've traveled around the world tasting thousands of wines annually in search of the most unique, exciting, and expensive bottles on the planet. So lately, I've been getting a ton of comments on my social media like, How are you traveling so much? Where do you get the funds for this? How do you get invited to places like this? I'll come travel with you and work for free. The reason that I get to travel so much is now, most of the time, I'm on press trips. Press or media trip is when several producers come together, or maybe a whole wine region or a whole country goes, invests, and brings in a group of journalists, maybe Instagrammers, maybe other influencers, shows them around their region, their wine their country and hope that they're going to get coverage whether it be an article a video social media post in exchange these trips usually start around 8 a.m the days are intense you're meeting you're talking to a lot of people you're tasting a heck of a lot of wine non-stop there's usually minimal breaks even eating is pretty darn quick so a lot of you that follow the feed here or my other social media see all the pictures all the food like oh that's so cool for me it's super stressful trying to take pictures of the food really quick getting the right angle and then stuffing my face <laughs> before moving on to the next tasting and before you know it you're back in your hotel probably about 1 a.m and then you gotta do the whole thing over again the next day and on top of that if you're traveling from a foreign country say if you're coming from america to europe you're gonna have jet lag and you know what there's no time to relax you gotta jump right into it. I need to sip on something. Cool decanter, by the way, huh? <laughs> Another way is judging at wine competitions. That's where the competition will actually fly you in, take care of your accommodation, everything during your stay. But in return, during the mornings or over a few days, you're judging the wines. Then during the off time, be it the afternoons or, the, or one or two free days, they'll take you around, show you different wineries, different wine regions, or other cultural attractions. Some of these competitions have budgets to pay fees, but a lot of times they don't. So at a lot of these competitions, the judges are basically giving their time. We're basically working for free. Yes, I am traveling with all expenses paid. But at the end of the day, is it really free? So these are not leisure trips. This is not a holiday. I remember bringing some friends on a little tasting with me. It was in Serbia. Yes, Serbia does make some fantastic wines. I took them to a winery visit. It was a couple. My friend, who is pretty enthusiastic about wine, knows a lot more than the average consumer. And his girlfriend that doesn't drink too much, but enjoys a glass occasionally. And at first, he was so excited. I remember him drinking a white wine. It's like, I've never had a white wine like this before. After we tasted the bottle wine, the winemaker was there. They wanted to go through some of the tank samples, some of the new vintages, some barrel samples. I ended up tasting about 30, 35 different samples there. I remember him and his girlfriend just sitting back like this. I started out doing this in the wine world about seven years ago, and it took me three years of posting two videos a week on YouTube, writing once to twice every single week on my website before I even went on my first press trip. So if this is something that you're really interested, I'm gonna give you some tips on how to get started. At the end of the video, I'll talk about what's in it for you versus some of the bad things. You have to create, create, create. Like I said earlier, it was years before I was ever invited on my first press trip. And I was writing constantly, building up Facebook, posting on Instagram, writing a couple times a week on the website. At the time, my girlfriend and partner, Shireen, was helping me out. So I had two people doing this. I've been following the channel for a long time. You'll see her in some past videos. And when I started out creating content, I knew that I wanted to eventually get to the great wines of the world. But I couldn't start writing about Barolo, which I love. At the time when I was with my partner Shireen, she loves Burgundy, we both love Bordeaux. I couldn't just start writing and creating content about that. We didn't have the connections. We were really nobody in the industry. So where did we start out? We started out with the lesser known wine regions, you know, Turkey, Armenia, Georgia, uh, all of ex-Yugoslavia, Croatia, Serbia, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, all these fascinating countries that are producing some great wines but aren't getting any recognition. But if you're starting from ground zero, you're gonna have to post, 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 post. You're gonna have to create tons of content before you even start to get noticed. Brings me to my next point. The content has to be 
good. You have to post content that's relevant to somebody, that's going to be useful to somebody. In recent years, I've started to write less and less on the website because I know I cannot be the greatest writer in the world. But you know what I think I can do? I think I can create some of the best wine videos in the world. So that's why I'm focusing strictly on YouTube. I'm always thinking about, okay, what shots do I have to take? What's going to be interesting? Is there an angle here? Is there something useful for you that I can make a cool video that you're going to appreciate and watch? PR agencies, tourist boards, wineries, wine regions want to know that you either have a sizable audience or an engaged audience. That comes from you creating good content. I remember in 2018 when Shireen and I were together, we got invited to the Professional Wine Writer Symposium of Napa Valley and Meadowood, everything paid for. And at the time, I didn't think my writing skills were up to par to be in the same room with those types of people. Steven Spirer was the headline. It was an awesome week, by the way. He kind of recreated the judgment of Paris tasting. I got a chance to sit down, get coached by editor-in-chief of Decanter. At the end of the day, it's because our website was generated a lot of traffic. We had already built a strong following on Instagram and Facebook. They wanted the exposure. Which brings me to my next point. You have to have a lot of expertise in some subject. Be it if you're a great photographer, if you're a fantastic writer, if you're good at video, if your wine knowledge is just off the charts like you're a master of wine, a master sommelier. I was recently on a press trip in northern Italy and there was a journalist there, an Italian journalist that recently turned to photography. He shot beautiful images. He even has some portraits up in the museum in the village of Barbaresco in Piedmont, Italy. Next point is you gotta meet people. You gotta go out, you gotta talk, you gotta meet as many people as possible. Just like if you're in any other business, most people go to conferences. Why? To network and to meet people. In the beginning, you're probably going to have to pay out of pocket to go to a certain place. Maybe go to an international tasting, an international show, a conference about wine. That's where you get the chance to meet people. You got to invest in yourself. Then you'll start to reap the rewards later on. Once you actually get on one of these trips, this is the biggest key. Don't be the group asshole. Wine is a people business after all. I've been on trips before where there have been some grumpy people and it has not bode well for the group. Other PR agencies take notice. Everybody knows what's going on. So be a kind person. Everyone will want to be around you. You know, somebody said one time, if you don't know who the asshole in the group is, maybe it is you. The next tip is you have to go to everything when you're on these trips. I was on a week-long press trip at the Languedoc Roussillon, and every single morning we had a blind tasting of about 100 to 200 wines were out, and the PR agency, the PR girls every morning greeted you, said hello, and if they saw you, they checked the, your name off. They knew if you were coming or not. During the last couple months, I was on some trips where some people didn't participate in all the activities, and everybody was talking. Everybody knew who was participating and who was not. Guess which one you want to be if you want to be on more trips. And the last point is be thankful. Just think about it. If you have kids, for instance, girlfriend, boyfriend, if they're thankful to you, you want to do more and more for them. I'm always extremely thankful for PR agencies, organizers, consortios. I was recently on a private trip to Chianti Classico. So I brought the social media manager and the communications manager a gift. I was in Hungary before. I brought them a bottle of wine and some sausages. So what's in it for you? Well, for me, what I've gotten out of it is the travel, the stories, the experiences. I remember a few years ago, back in 2019, I had the chance to go to Moldova for a week and I was just completely blown away by the country. Before I went there, I knew some of the Moldovan wines were pretty solid, but then when I was there, I tasted probably three to five absolute world-class knockout fine wines. And above all, I was just blown away by the warmth of the people. People were absolutely happy to show me their country. Another thing is I left the U.S. about 13, 14 years ago. I've not been the most patriotic person on the planet, but in Moldova, a lot of the wine projects that agriculture is funded by USAID. And of course, I understand why you, the U.S. is there financially. However, it was really cool to see some of these people that really needed the help were making some fantastic wine, just needed the help to buy some equipment, do wonderful things with the funds. Kind of made me feel proud in a way for the first time in a few years. I also recently just got back from seven weeks straight on the road and one of the trips was in Trentino in the Valle de Chambra where they make Muller Thurgau and it was just a complete completely magical trip. I remember on the last evening, we had a dance party in the middle of Chembra, this tiny town. I was requesting songs like Daft Punk and Fat Boy Slim. 
and a local invited me to his cellar. The kind of cellar where everybody gets together during the afternoon, it's dark, you turn off all the lights, you just eat sausages, ham, cheese, and then you just drink the night away or the afternoon away. I think I got home at 5 or 6 a.m. And the next morning I had to wake up because there was going to be a helicopter ride. <laughs> Wasn't going to miss that. You're going to see that coming up on the YouTube channel. But I remember getting to the place the organizer saying, Ah, Matt, so you saw the real Val de Chambre. Another amazing thing is the wines that you're going to be able to taste. Let's face it, if you want to break into the industry as a young younger person, it's really hard nowadays to taste some of the iconic wines of the world because they just keep going up rapidly in price. I was recently at the on premiere week in Bordeaux and I got invited to a cocktail party at Chateau Yquem. It was just an absolute magical evening. First of all, I had to pinch myself. It was incredible. It's the first time I wore a jacket in a couple of years. But I remember it was not only the wines of Yquem, but in the center, there was a bunch of wines from all the different appellations, from Pouillac, Saint Julien, Pomerol, Margot, and old vintages. I sat there and I tasted the entire time. At the end of the night, they poured 1989 Chateau de you know, one of the most iconic sweet wines in the world. These are wines that you, I don't get to taste on a normal basis. Actually, I feel like I tasted more of those expensive wines when I was living in Singapore. And the next point is what's really all about is the people that you're gonna meet. Wine is a social thing. You have to drink it, you have to enjoy it with people. And when you're on these trips, you're gonna meet super passionate producers. I was just in Chianti Classico. Uh, I just met this amazing producer called Caparso. One of his wines actually brought me to tears. Just a one-man show doing the entire vineyards, doing everything in the cellar. His wines were absolutely beautiful. One of my good, good friends in the wine industry, you know him if you watch the channel, Fabian Linné. We've done some travel vlogs together, traveling through France. He's been one of the most helpful people I've met in wine, and we have a bond now that I feel is pretty unbreakable. The schedule can be incredibly demanding and super exhausting. I've seen a lot of people not make all the events, all the tastings on this press trip just because it becomes too much, especially if they're in the summer, you're walking through the vineyard, it's super hot, the vineyards are steep, plus you have to taste all these red wines in the really hot, warm temperature. You have to rush through, you have to eat, you really get no downtime. It can be pretty darn grueling and demanding. I've definitely seen people lose their temper. I definitely have two on these trips. Number two, it is not a joy ride. Producers, regions, states, they're paying to show you their wine region, their winery, their country. You can't just sit back and relax and not do anything. You have to be intensive, you have to be focused, you have to pay attention, be off the phone, listen, talk, converse, engage with everybody. I compare it a lot of times to like field trips. When you were a preschooler or an elementary school, everybody gets shuttled around in a bus. It's not very comfortable. People, you don't really have a free schedule. You can't come or go. You're kind of stuck there. I see a lot of people that they're also working another job full time. When we're going late into the night over dinner talking with producers, they're just sitting there like this. You're at the mercy of the schedule that you're given. The next and the important point that not a lot of people want to talk about is how do you actually monetize this? Unless you're exceptional or have a huge following, you're not going to get paid to go on these trips. You're going to go there to get the content, to get the information. That's up to you to monetize. If you're a traditional journalist, wine journalism jobs are few and far between. In the U.S., I think there's only four or five full-time journalists in newspapers. Selling your articles can be extremely difficult. The, the pay is extremely low. You got to pitch to different outlets too. If you have 15, 20, 50 people on one press trip and they're all pitching to one or two magazines, it's pretty darn competitive. And you got to think of the time lost. Let's say you're making $60,000 a year, maybe $5,000 a month. You go on a week press trip, five, six, seven days. You have all that time lost. So you're losing about $1,250. Plus, when you get back, you have to do writing. You have to put the content together. That can take another week. So all of a sudden, you're out $2,500 for you know a five-day trip. For instance, some of the travel vlogs that you guys really like encourage me to make more of, and there's more in the pipeline. You gotta think of all the time it takes me to actually go there on location, shoot the travel there, back, and then once I get back, the editing in Final Cut Pro, you have so much footage to go over, plus overlay all the music. That can take in itself 40 to 50 hours just to get a 12 to 13 minute video out. 
If you watch the channel, have I clarified anything for you? Is this something that you might be interested in doing? Or do you, when you hear about everything, do you think, ah, maybe that's just a little bit too much work for what you're getting. Maybe I'll just do wine as a hobby. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you soon.